Hi, my name is Stephanie, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the executive function of monitoring. While this channel is focused on autism-related things, executive function issues are not exclusive to autism. In fact, they are commonly seen in a variety of other conditions as well. So I just want to make it clear that issues with executive function, whether it's monitoring or other executive functions, doesn't necessarily mean that you are autistic or have autism. Now, before we get started, I need to do a little merch shout out. <laughs> autism isn't a dirty word. It's really hard because I'm actually underneath the thing now and I keep hitting my head. <laughs> if you want to get this design, whether in a hoodie like this one or in a shirt or something else, you can check out my merch store. It is linked in the description box. Another thing I want to note is that executive functions are often quite intertwined with each other. There are three main executive functions that typically kind of make up the major parts of executive functioning and then everything else is kind of smaller and sometimes when they're not the main three they might be a little bit more difficult to fully define because of how interweaved into the other functions they are and I feel like monitoring is a bit like that. I came across a paper that was on the self portion of self-control and in it they actually had a table of definitions that included three different terms that involved the word monitoring and I think from this we can really derive a meaningful definition of what monitoring is. Error monitoring, tracking one's performance on a task and noticing when one has committed an error, metacognitive monitoring, reflecting on one's ongoing cognitive activity, and uncertainty monitoring, evaluating how certain one feels about the likely accuracy of one's responses. So these three definitions contain three key words that I think are very important for understanding what monitoring is. Those words are tracking, reflecting, and evaluating. So on a basic level, that is what monitoring is. Our ability to track what we're doing, track what's happening in the moment, our ability to reflect on what we have just done, and evaluate that reflection and things we have tracked against maybe what should happen or what we think should be happening, etc. We see monitoring happening obviously in everyday things. Say you're making some pancakes and you're following the instructions. So you put in the pancake mix and next you're supposed to put in two eggs and you put in the first egg and you're about to move on. But because of monitoring, your brain says, ah, ah, ah hold on. We just did this step and we just put in one egg, but before we can move on to this next step, we have to put in the second egg. So this is kind of the process of monitoring what it's supposed to do. So we saw that we did these steps, but before we can move on, we need to do this other thing. If we want to get fancy that, hold up, wait a minute, we need the second egg part would be what they call error monitoring in that paper that we referenced for definitions. So having trouble with monitoring is an issue that most people will point to in say children not getting their homework done. Imagine trying to do math and having monitoring issues. Math is probably one of the best examples of using the monitoring abilities that your brain has because usually your teacher would say things like these are the steps show your work and then check your work one source put it this way self-monitoring involves a child's ability to self-evaluate or comprehend how well he or she is performing a specific task self-monitoring helps children track and reflect on their progress regarding a specific assignment and understand that adjustments may need to be made to accomplish the task at hand an example of positive self-monitoring is when a child identifies that a mathematics formula isn't producing the desired results and checks their work to discover the error. So that definition definitely puts more emphasis on maybe achieving a standard or being able to perform properly than necessarily the keeping track part of things. However, monitoring is really both these things, the combination of being able to track what's happening and reflect on that happening and then evaluate it against a standard. Standard. Another source implies that monitoring might be also happening on an even more unconscious level. I think this was kind of hinted at at the whole metacognitive monitoring because obviously you're not really consciously thinking about the cognitive things going on in your brain. 
Monitoring is normally an unconscious process that kicks in when we are on autopilot doing normal tasks. For instance, if you are walking down the street and talking to someone at the same time, normally only a small part of your brain is engaged in walking. You already know how to walk, so the monitoring part of the brain takes over and keeps you from bumping into things while you have your chat. For someone with executive function issues, if they were tired or overloaded, they would suddenly have problems with the autopilot settings on basic activities, dropping or bumping into things or simply not being able to pay attention in ways that could be hazardous, like walking out onto a busy street. However, do note that this aspect really isn't mentioned often in other sources. This could be in part because it's not as easy to monitor or study as something like giving a specific task with multiple steps would be. Clearly with walking and being able to maybe subconsciously take in the fact that you're about to hit a lamppost if you don't move out of the way, that's going to take more than just monitoring and that's really how a lot, if not all, of the executive functions are. There's more than one happening at pretty much any given time. Monitoring could involve monitoring what you're doing in a social situation, how close or far you're standing from someone, your voice level, etc. And taking in and measuring feedback from the other person's cues as to how that conversation is going and adjusting as necessary. I'm not sure that I'd agree that just because an autistic person has more difficulty understanding its social cues than a non-autistic person, that it would mean that they're not necessarily having a great time with their monitoring executive function but I don't know on that aspect. So the main method that I have seen in helping with this particular executive function is with math. Basically setting up that routine of here are the steps, we do the steps, we're going to check our answer and make sure we show and check our work. This is kind of set up to be able to make this a habitual process that hopefully will apply to more than just math, but obviously you're growing that ability to check your steps to, to keep track of what you're doing because if you don't know where you are in a math problem, it's gonna get messy, right? So definitely math and checking your work and checking your answers really is a way that a lot of people encourage helping people who might have issues with monitoring. Some practical suggestions include prioritizing accuracy over speed and encouraging someone to review their work. By doing this, you give time and space for monitoring, even if maybe it's not as natural to someone or as quick for some people. By encouraging this as a built-in part of the process, it helps someone to kind of do that maybe almost more as a routine or a habit. One can also use the time or maybe kind of looking at what other people are doing to measure if they are taking too long on something. There's another suggestion on having someone say, during this set amount of time, I plan on getting these things done and then giving them that set of time and seeing if they actually can practically complete something in that amount of time. And I think this part is something that I actually struggle with. I tend to not have a good grasp on how long things take. I do understand the steps process and I'm pretty good at tracking back to figure out where things went wrong and why, but I'm not really good at understanding maybe how fast I'm working on something, if that makes sense. So I hope this video was somewhat helpful or insightful on the executive function of monitoring. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy autism related content from me, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I upload to this channel every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you to everyone who supports me here on YouTube as YouTube members my patrons over on Patreon, and a special thank you to my Spaz Tier patron, Philip Noah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!